Cheap phones are getting good, and good phones are getting cheap. We have a lot of budget phones that are really worth your attention, but what if we take a look at the flagship from 2013, which used to cost over $500 US, but now it costs just below $130. Which one should you choose? Today's cheap phone or yesterday's flagship? This is Linus, you're watching Techline HD, and this is the review of the ZTE Nubia Z5. You will notice the flagship grade quality as soon as you pick up the box because everything just screams premium. In fact, you are getting two high quality plastic boxes where all the contents are packed neatly. ZTE supply the Z5 with a pair of good sounding earphones, a charging plug along with a USB cable in one box, and instruction manuals, SIM injector pin, and NFC tag in another. When it comes to the design, we are looking at what is becoming a rare phenomenon these days, a very compact device with 5 inches display. It has a metal frame around the sides along with metal buttons, which have a very good tactile feedback. There is a volume rocker on the left, a power key on the right, the micro USB port on the bottom and a headset jack along with a single micro SIM card slot on the top. Back in 2013, selfies were not that big so we have just 2 megapixel shooter on the front top. On the bottom, there are 3 nicely backlit capacitive keys and the home button also doubles as a pulsing notification light. As far as optics, the Numia Z5 doesn't seem to lag behind today's phones as it has a 13 megapixel Sony camera which however protrudes quite a bit from the glossy yet high quality plastic backplate. When it comes to the sound, you can find a dual rear mounted speakers. Overall, the ZTE Nubia Z5 is very well constructed and it feels like a high quality phone even today. As far as display, the 5 inches 1080p panel is sharp, vivid and bright enough to please your eyes and I have no complaints about it. When it comes to the UI, the ZTE Nubia Z5 runs on the outdated Android 4.4.2 KitKat with a highly customized Nubia skin on top of it. As usual to the Chinese phones, there is no app drawer and all the apps sit on the home screens. You are not getting a lot of extra features that you haven't seen before. Still, some of them are quite useful like gesture controls while others like split screen feature on 5 inches display sounds useless to me. When it comes to the customization, you can select from a variety of themes, change the layout of the capacitive keys and so on. Overall, the UI is running pretty smoothly but I have to say that there are some hiccups there and there while simply navigating through the menus. At the time of their release, the Nubia Z5 had a true flagship grade spec sheet. That includes a quad-core Snapdragon 600 chip, 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage which is however not expandable. Can it still handle 3D gaming? Well, yes, it still does better than a lot of cheap phones out there but don't expect premium experience either. The max graphics on the Asphalt 8 can be set to medium. Well, it is the same as with the MediaTek Helio X10 chip for example. The overall performance is good but not great as there is occasional stutter and some skipped frames. The good point is that the phone doesn't heat up whatsoever. Watching HD content is a great experience on a sharp full HD display and the loudspeaker is really good except for the distortions at the maximum volume setting. When it comes to the camera app, we have a pretty simple interface and there are not too many features or settings to play with in the auto mode but the included pro mode gives you a little bit more freedom. The share speed is pretty slow in general but it is faster than many of the sub 130 US dollars phones. The 13 megapixels camera on the back is a hit or miss. Sometimes you can capture decent looking images but other times the sensor struggles with focusing, the colors are not always accurate and some shots are underexposed. On the other hand, other shots look pretty good and they may even rival some of the today's mid-rangers. The night shots are pretty much terrible but they are still better than lots of cheap china phones I recently tested. A 2 megapixel selfie shooter is actually not bad at all despite having a low resolution which leads to less details. When it comes to the 1080p video, we see the quality that is comparable to today's low-end phones as it lacks in details and the video could look sharper overall. As far as connectivity goes, I have no complaints about the call quality, signal reception or Wi-Fi but GPS was kind of disappointment. It was slow to get a lock speed and it was simply inaccurate during my testing. The sealed in 2300mAh battery is kind of another letdown of this phone. 
I could barely pass 2 hours of screen on time on the daily use which didn't involve any gaming. So there you have it, the ZTE Nubia Z5, the flagship from the past. It has a great design, excellent build quality, vibrant display, decent gaming performance and it is very compact. However, the UI is not the most fluid out there as there is occasional stutter, the camera is unreliable and the battery life is a disappointment. So how does it stack up against today's low-end phones that have a similar price? Well, pretty good I would say. For the price of $130 US, Nubia Z5 will most likely have a better build quality, a slightly better display and better audio quality. However, the difference may not be that significant and you may find some newly released low-end phones with a faster UI performance, including a newer Android version, more reliable camera and a much better battery life. At the end of the day, you have to decide what are your personal preferences. It was Linus and thanks for watching Techline HD. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, please check out some other videos on the channel and please visit Facebook page of Techline HD where I post some other videos that I make and the articles that I write. See you in the next video soon.